Well, welcome back, folks, and here we go. It's our 12th round of Mo Star Mind, our quiz which is run in conjunction with the Montrose Community Trust. And up next, our current volunteer is the one, the only, Mr. Kerr Waddle. How are you? Look, I'm great, mate. Uh, how are you getting on yourself? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I mean, it's uh, obviously tough just now, but it's tough for everyone, so I'm doing quite good. So, um, you're absolutely right. It is very tough for a lot of people at the, at the moment for a lot of different reasons. Um, so, what are you managing to do to, to occupy your time currently? Just trying to do as much exercise as I am. Because to be honest, it's actually come at quite a good time for me. All this football finishing, because obviously I've been injured. So, I've been doing quite a lot of running and stuff like that in the house. And just trying to help Nicole around the house do more work. So, uh, who is it that you're currently self-isolating with then? Just with my girlfriend. And so she's uh, she's expecting you to be cooking, cleaning, ironing, washing, that kind of stuff? I'm not really trusted with a lot of that. I'm allowed to take the bins down. <laughs> and I just have to run behind them and try and pick things up. <laughs> Well, uh, like most of the, the ones, the uh, quizzes I've done so far, obviously I've, I've mentioned the, the community trust, uh, but you're in a slightly different position from, from the other players and the fact that you're actually, you know, a, a member of, of the team. So uh, you know better than many the amount of work that they would normally do. I mean, uh, how proud are you to be part of something which is uh, making a big effort in Montrose at the moment? It's absolutely brilliant. Obviously, I think everyone knows how much work that Peter, Logan and the rest of the boys do. I think Peter's even out today helping people, picking up messages for them, dropping people off, dropping things off for people. And they just make such a big difference in the community. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, um, football is, is, is a big part of, of, of your, your life. And, and having been injured there for quite a while, it's, uh, it's having less of an impact. Uh, on you, but does it make you even more hungry to get back into football now? Absolutely, absolutely. Even even when you're not playing every Saturday, you're still going to training. But just now, I just can't wait to get back, get back seeing yeah. the boys as well. Yeah, I mean, do you think you'll have a better appreciation of of football once you you do finally get back to it? Yeah, I do. I think it'll always. I think it'll make. Everyone appreciates it more and nobody take anything for granted in life and in football as well. Yeah, I think, I think the point you make there about taking things for granted just generally, generally in life, it's not until we've been put in a situation like this that all these things that you just take for granted when they're not there, you just don't yeah. realise how important they are. I know. Even things like going to see family members and... Yes, because obviously sometimes you, you're like, th these tend to be the people that you can sometimes put to the side because, oh, I'll see them another time, I'll see them another time. Yeah. But of course, when you don't see them at all, it's really, really difficult. It is difficult, really. Yeah. So um, how are you managing to keep in contact with, uh, with the rest of your family at the moment? Um, I've been phoning my dad, texting my sister, and I've been going up to my mum's garden, standing on the other side of the garden and speaking to her. So that's been fine. So you're still able to keep in contact with them all. That's the main yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, good. Well, uh, again, like I've said, look, thanks very much for volunteering to do this for the, the Community Trust today. I'm going to take a, a moment just to talk about one of the things that they're, they're currently doing. Um, you've mentioned the fact that Peter might be out today collecting uh, food. Um, the, the food bank in Montrose, the guys are coming and collecting uh, food from folks' doorsteps on a Monday, a Wednesday and a Friday and uh, taking it along to, to the Montrose Food Bank. So I have been out and uh, got some stuff for it. So a few of the things that were suggested were the likes of uh, tomato uh, sauces. I've got some spaghetti, and um, we've got some tins of fruit, um, and I've got some tomatoes, that type of thing. But um, if, if you're unsure on, or, or want to know exactly what it is that the, um, the food banks are really looking for, if you go onto the Angus uh, Food Bank site, and they've got a list of all of the, the types of things that they're, they're looking for people donating if they possibly can. And I know that Peter wanted me to say that um, already they're extremely grateful for what the people of Montrose are already donating to the food bank. 
And if you can continue to do that, or if you can start to donate towards it, um, if you, you, you can, the, the help you give would be greatly uh, appreciated. But thank you very much to everybody who's already done stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, have you seen a lot of volunteering things going on round about uh, Uriah? Because you're in our growth, isn't is that right? Yeah, I've stayed at both. I've not seen too much. I've heard a lot on Facebook and stuff. A lot of people have been saying they can help people out and stuff. I've not seen too much of it happen. Yeah, sure I, think think. A, <laughs> I think a lot of people all over the country are, are stepping up and, and helping out neighbours wherever they possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, how confident, Kerr, are you feeling about this quiz, mate? I'm feeling quite confident. <clears throat> Okay, well, there's two ways to look at this. If you want to win this, then you're going to have to beat Flem's score of 11 points. 11? 11 points. I'm How not did you get that? He was majestic. I think half of them were guesses, but you know what? He guessed correctly. He got 11 points. I what? can tell you're stunned. So maybe it might be better for you to focus on the other end to begin with. And that is, unfortunately, Aaron achieved only one point. <laughs> <laughs> so you only need to get more than one, and you are off the bottom of the table, so to speak. That's fine. That's, that, that's, that, that's where you're going to start. And if you can achieve 12, well, fantastic. <laughs> I like it. Okay, <clears throat> very briefly, just go through the rules with you, because they're pretty straightforward. You've got 90 seconds to answer as many uh, sports-related uh, questions as you possibly can. Uh, if you answer and you get it wrong, I'll give you the correct answer before we move on. If you want to, you can pass at any point, and I'll give you the answer at the end. And if the bell rings during the, the last question, I'll finish the question off, and you'll get a chance to answer it. So are you okay with all and, that? And you better have to pass it than answer wrong. I, I... I couldn't possibly tell you because then it might be seen as favouritism. But <clears throat> if I were in your shoes, I would pass. Okay. Okay, pal? Okay, I'm ready. Here we go then. So, Kevon, your 90 seconds start now. What nationality is manager Manuel Pellegrini? Argentinian. He's Chilean. In Rugby Union, what is the TMO? Pass. Which rugby league legend earned the nickname Chariots as a result of his lightning speed? Pass. Which city were the 2020 Olympic Games due to be held in? Tokyo. Is correct. With which sport do you associate Kelly Smith? Uh, football. Is correct. Which country has dominated the sport of table tennis in the modern era? China. Correct. By what name is the captain of a curling team known? Skip. Correct. <clears throat> The highest scoring game in the Premier League was between Portsmouth and Reading in 2007. How many goals were scored? 12. Oh, it was 11. Who was the first English player to score in three separate World Cups? Um, pass. In which sport might you witness a slap shot? Volleyball. Oh, that's quite a good guess, but unfortunately it's ice hockey. Hard to bear. Do you know what? You're not on the bottom, I can tell you that straight off. So this is good news. So you didn't get uh, Manuel Pellegrini being Chilean. The TMO, which you passed on, that is a television match official. Um, the Chariots rugby league player <clears throat> is Martin Ophaya. Um, you got Tokyo, you got Kelly Smith football, you got China table tennis, you got the skip for the curling team, uh, and you passed on the English player, and that was David Beckham. 
David Beckham oh, was the wow. first English player to score in three separate World Cups. So, Kerr, you have got a score of four. That's decent, I'll take that. That is decent, buddy. I would be pleased with that. What's the t- table looking like? Well, I think you must be about six or seventh, I would think. That's by the middle of the that. pack. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people have felt as long as they're above Paul's score of three, then really it doesn't matter after that. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. So expect, expect Paul to be commenting on this, saying it's the easiest questions. It's coming to the children. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Kerr, um, thanks very much again for volunteering to do this for the Community Trust today. Um, it's really good of you. And uh, look after yourself, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, look forward to seeing you back at Links Park very, very soon, mate. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.